What's going on YouTube? So several years ago, Volvo began reinventing their entire lineup. And this S90 is what's at the top of their sedan lineup. Now for 2020, it received some significant changes and updates. Most importantly, the addition of this R design trim level for the first time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see if this is a great alternative to the German status quo. All right, so checking out the exterior here. The main thing that's new for 2020 is the brand new R Design trim level, which is what we have today. So in essence, everything I'm showing you is actually a new feature, you could say. That does mean like the other Volvo trims, we have a specific R Design grille. This has kind of the black mesh finish with the matte silver around it, as well as a more aggressive lower fascia. Now the other two trims, they don't change in design. So you still have the black bars on the base momentum and on the top end inscription, it is silver bars. Turning over here to your headlights, just like every Volvo, you have these really clean and classy full LED headlights with the signature Thor's hammer. Um, in addition to that, you will also find LED fog lights and those are standard on every single trim. So going along with the more aggressive front end, here on the R design, we have some aggressive contrast alloy wheels. We start with a 19 inch alloy. However, we have the optional 20 inch alloys. Now on the other trim levels, you ha have an 18 inch alloy on the momentum that does have a new design for 2020. And then on the top end description, you have the same arrangement of a 19 standard and an optional 20 inch alloy. Now coming up here to your mirrors, as you can see on the R design, we have a black mirror cap, and then every single model has all the features. So you have auto dimming, power folding, heating, as well as blind spot monitoring. All right, so before we get around to the rear design of this S90, I do wanna stop here at the side because this is an area where this S90 really looks very long and expensive. Uh, now it actually is longer than its main competition. Uh, it comes in at 200 inches in length, which is around five inches longer than the E-Class and A6. Um, so it actually is longer than some of its competition. And then walking around to the rear design, you do have that nice Volvo sedan look. Uh, of course, most of that is due to these uh, LED tail lights. They look really quite nice. However, I will say you do have a halogen turn signal. I'm a little disappointed in that. And then up top on this R design, we do have the optional spoiler. And then all of the uh, S90s will come standard with these uh, nice dual exhaust with the chrome exhaust tip outlets. Now this is a Volvo after all, so that means that safety is going to be a priority for this S90, and Volvo does congruently make all of your safety systems standard across the board. You have standard automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, auto high beam headlights, lane keeping assist, and even a pilot assist system which allows for semi-autonomous driving. In addition to that, you will also get rear auto braking for 2020. But anyway, that sums up this S90's classy exterior design. So now let's go ahead and hop on the inside and see what the R design throws in in there. So on the S90, of course, you do have Volvo's typical Q fob, which is the same beautiful design with real leather on it that matches with the interior color combination. Now this does start on the R design trim and the inscription trim. Now, let's get inside the vehicle itself. Of course, all you have to do is just grab the handle and a sensor will unlock it and unfold the mirrors. All right, and checking out the cabin of this S90. As you can see, it makes a fantastic first impression, definitely a beautiful design. Now, as I've said several times up to this point, the R design is new for 2020. So in essence, everything inside of this cabin is new this year. Now, as far as your interior color combinations of all the trim levels, on the Momentum, you have standard real leather that is going to be new this year. 
In your choice of amber, blonde, charcoal, and maroon colors, the top end inscription has those same colors, but that will be finished in full Napa leather. Now, as far as this R design, this is where you have actually two different uh, seat options. The standard option is going to be Napa leather trimmed with a new buck uh, cloth insert down the middle. However, for $750, you can get it finished in full Napa leather like this example has. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is beautifully finished and it's actually a little bit nicer than in the XC90 crossover. So you have real leather, of course, across your armrest as well as across the top. You also have this cool perforated leather that runs all through here and even down into your lower areas. Across the middle here, we have some real aluminum trim. And of course, all four of your windows are gonna be one touch automatic with two person memory seating. As far as your seats, you do have 10-way power adjustment with 4-way lumbar as well as power thigh extension. And then these seats themselves, these are absolutely beautiful seats. Honestly, Volvo seats are probably my favorite in the entire auto industry because they just look so beautiful and they are so extremely comfortable. So while the door trim is a little bit different than in the XC90 crossover, the rest of the materials do pretty closely match that model. So on your R design as well as your inscription, this is where you'll have the tailored dashboard. So all of this will be finished in full leather as well as across the top of the door trim, which I already pointed out. Dropping down here to the middle, we have a large chunk of real textured aluminum. And that does continue down here over top of this storage area as well. You also have some Napa leather that runs all through here and then curves around so you have a nice area to rest your knee against. And of course, being a Volvo, we don't have push button start. We actually have a twist button start. Now, just like every Volvo in the entire lineup, this 12.3 inch fully digital gauge cluster has become standard on every single model for 2020, including the base model. And it does have the same functions as in the other models. So you can change certain things like the design uh, to allow for instance, a map, or you can also change like the color scheme and various other things. Now, in addition to that, you would have a head up display if you choose to have the advanced package, which we do not on this specific example. Now coming back here to the steering wheel. Of course you do have electric power assisted steering, and this is a new wheel, which is exclusive to the R design. It does have a beautiful design, as well as the nice color contrast stitching. Uh, R design also comes exclusively with paddle shifters. Um, now this wheel is manual tilt and telescoping. And we also have the optional heating, which is packaged with the heated rear seats. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about interior storage, where the S90 surprisingly has just about the same amount of space as the XC90. So inside of your center console here, this is pretty deep. Uh, you do have a nice felt lining as well as a rubber pad in the bottom and two of your USB ports. Now, when we put it to the test, can get all of the full stack of coupons in there as long as we fold them in half. Now up in front of that, we have this big piece of aluminum which we slide back to reveal our two cup holders, another small storage area here, and a 12 volt outlet. And then there is finally one more really small area right there. All right, so heading back here to the shifter. Most of the models are gonna come with this traditional shifter. Um, but if you choose the T8, it will have the crystal electronic shifter. Now pull back for drive, of course, and bump to the left if you want to shift manually here or with those paddle shifters. And when we head into reverse, you will find a standard backup camera with active trajectory as well as parking sensors. Uh, you will notice we are missing a 360 degree camera system. That's because we do not have the advanced package. If we had that, we would have the 360 camera as well as automatic perpendicular and parallel parking. A 
And then back behind the shifter, we have our electronic parking brake as well as auto brake hold function. This roller here, this controls your drive mode, so you can press down on it and roll through your three different ones, which would be Eco, Comfort, and Dynamic. We'll talk about that a little later in the test drive. And then we'll go ahead and move right here to our audio systems. Now on the S90, there are going to be several options. We basically have the middle option, which is the 600 watt 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system standard on our design and inscription. So let's go ahead and take a sample of that. sound quality of this system is excellent um, now you can get the 19 speaker 1400 watt Bauer and Wilkins premium audio system for $3,200 if you prefer now there is nothing wrong with this system like I said it's excellent in itself um, but I have sampled that top end sound system and it is insane okay so now that brings us basically to our main 9 inch census display um, this, of course, is standard across all the models, and it's where a lot of the functions inside the vehicle are located. So the first function is going to be the climate control. So what you do is tap there, and that's where you get some basic functions for your fan speed and your zones. Uh, you can also adjust the rear climate from here because it is standard four zone automatic. Touch right here is where you adjust the temperature up and down, just like that. You will also find that heated seats are now standard equipment across all models for 2020 and seat ventilation is available. Now you just press that little button right there and it takes you to the home screen. Um, now I won't go through, a, through this too much in detail because we do have a dedicated tech help video, um, but since it, the census system does remain pretty much the same this year. So you have these little tabs which you tap on and they expand out. So this is our standard navigation system. Now you do have both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay both on board if you prefer to use those systems and they also do run in those tabs. So you can still uh, use the other parts of the system and Android Auto or Apple CarPlay at the same time. Now moving on up here, we have a standard frameless glass auto dining mirror with three Homelink Universal remotes as well as a built-in compass. And then up top, Volvo was nice enough to include a gigantic panoramic moonroof as standard equipment across every single trim level. And as you can see, it goes back quite a distance and this front panel does open up quite wide. All right, so getting back into this S90's rear seat, I have to say my first impression is wow, 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 wow. This is a really, really nice rear seat. Um, honestly, this feels a lot like a Mercedes S-Class and a lot of that has to do with that extra space uh, that you get from being five inches longer than most of the competition. Now, as far as your technical legroom figures, they're gonna come in at 40 inches of rear legroom and 38 inches of rear headroom. Honestly though, I feel like that's lying a little bit because this seat is adjusted roughly to Drew's driving position and you can see how much space I have. That's almost two feet. That is absolutely unheard of in this segment and my feet can slide up underneath the seat if, even if you can you know, fully stretch out and reach the seat. Now as far as your feature set, that's also pretty exceptional for this class of vehicle. Um, so here in the center, we are gonna have four zone climate so each rear passenger can adjust their temperature. We do also have optional three-stage heated rear seats. You have your own vents, both here and on the B pillar. And then down below that, you have two charging USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet. Now we're not done yet. Uh, we do have quite a few more features and that's gonna be here on the door of this uh, passenger side. So we do have a standard rear sunshade on this R design model. We also have standard window sunshades. We also have the ability to control the moonroof from back here so we can actually open it up from back here, which is really quite nice. And then in addition to that, 
if you're being chauffeured around in your S90, you can also adjust the passenger seat with this little thing here. So you can scoot it uh, forward and back. You can adjust the tilt of the seat. So honestly, guys, this is something that you really don't see outside of like a Mercedes S-Class and sedans that cost over $100,000. So I have to say this is definitely a fantastic rear seat uh, in this S90. Now walking up to the trunk of this S90, all you have to do to open is locate the button right under the lid. And it is nicely dampened uh, to open right up. Now I do also believe you can get a power trunk in this S90. However, this particular model does not have that. Now as far as your actual space back here, it's going to come in at 15.4 cubic feet of space, which has placed it quite a bit larger than its main competition like the Audi A6 and BMW 5 Series. And you know, just looking inside, um, it's a little narrow I will say, however it goes back a really long ways. And as far as how they finished it, we do have a 12 volt power outlet here on the right side, a little bit of storage, and up underneath of the floor, if we lift it up, you will find a spare tire. It is also worth knowing that these seats do not fold on this S90. Now over here at your passenger seat, you're going to find these same adjustments as the driver and this incredibly comfortable seat. And then here in front, uh, you will find a really, really good size glove box. It opens very wide and there is tons of room for all of our coupons, all the different brands. And then up top, we do have a sun visor with an LED light and mirror, and it does also detach. However, it does not extend. So this is our first time behind the wheel of this Volvo S90. I have to say, first impression, um, I really liked it. Uh, very powerful engine. You know, of course, this is just like all the other Volvos in the lineup. It has that unique powertrain arrangement. Yep. So um, now there is actually a change for 2020. The base T5 model that's been discontinued. So you're going to go straight to the T6 in 2020. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, a vehicle like this deserves to have this much power, I think. It's a flagship, it should that's right. have the, the base setup. Yeah. So as far as what this actually is, this is a two liter four cylinder engine with both a turbo and a supercharged component. Yeah. Um, yes. And all that together is gonna make 310 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. Um, you know, it really feels remarkably yeah. normal though when you're behind the wheel of it, even though there's nothing else that I'm aware of um, in the industry that has both a turbocharged or turbo turbocharger and a supercharger on the same engine. You know, and it's a very small engine, but you know, it even does a good job in stuff like uh, XC90. So, you know, it's the same engine that's in the XC90 and this is a smaller sedan. So it definitely feels a lot more powerful than that model. Um, so I think you're gonna really do not mind the engine. And of course you can also get the T8 model, that um, plug-in hybrid. Um, so that's now up to 420 horsepower for uh, 2020. So that's kind of like your performance version. Mm -hmm. uh, it is quite a bit more expensive than this T6, um, but the vast majority of guys are gonna stick with this model. scoots. <laughs> yeah, I'm really impressed. The other thing I like about it is it doesn't really sound like a four-cylinder. You know, I mean, that's part of the appeal, right, of having a six-cylinder is something smooth, refined, um, you know, quiet, doesn't sound strained, and I really don't feel that yeah. in this four-cylinder at all. Um, it also makes kind of an interesting noise. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but you can actually hear at the uh, low RPMs, the supercharger, and then, of course, um, how this system works is basically the supercharger acts on the low end and then hands off to a turbocharger in the upper RPMs, um, you know, because that's more efficient. But you can actually hear a little supercharger yeah. whine, you know, in this uh, luxury 
limo type of car, so that's really a, a cool characteristic, I think. You know, I'm just kind of cruising along here. Uh, he did say it's a luxury limo. So, you know, this is Volvo's flagship sedan. Uh, and going along with that, it's going to have a phenomenal ride quality. Um, one of the things that we said in the XC90 was that you just feel isolated, and I definitely feel that here in this regular S90. Um, it, you just kind of cruise along, and there's a bunch of traffic around you, and you just really can't hear anything. You feel mm -hmm. super isolated, uh, very comfortable. The ride quality is good. Um, I will say this is not... It's not an S-Class, you know, even though it straddles a segment, it definitely has a sportier vibe to it than something like a S-Class. Um, so it's not like the ultimate in comfort, but it is very comfortable. Um, and it has a little bit more of a sporty feel than those type of flagship models normally. Right. You can also get an air suspension in this uh, for a little under $2,000. Um, we don't have it on this specific example. But if you're wondering, you know, if you have much of a trade-off because of choosing the R design, I have, you know, I haven't driven them back to back, but as comfortable as it is in here, I can go ahead and say it's really not a trade-off. It's definitely yeah. still gonna be very comfort-oriented, even though you have these sportier elements around. Now that we're up to speed, I'll go ahead and get a sound level reading. We're uh, 52 decibels. <laughs> I think that may be one of the lowest rate readings that we've ever gotten. <laughs> so there's our dynamic mode. Uh, you know, kind of tunes things up a little bit, makes it more aggressive. That's really nice. Now, as far as the transmission, I mentioned that up to this point, it is an eight-speed automatic transmission. Uh, and now that the T5 is gone, you have standard all-wheel drive as well. So your base configuration is now a T6 all-wheel drive. And as we have been doing with every car that we review, uh, we need to talk about the slam dunk and the air ball. So kind of the best thing that we think about this S90 and just maybe the worst thing. Um, the best thing that we talked about is just the value, the sheer value. I, I know we haven't talked about the pricing just yet, um, but this thing is under $60,000 and it has a rear seat that's like a Mercedes S-Class. And you know, in addition to that, just this interior, just in general, you have leather on the dashboard, you have leather on the door trims. Um, it feels very flagship level and $58,000 is not a flagship level price point. Um, so that's definitely our slam dunk for this vehicle. Right. And as far as the air ball, we talked about it. Uh, this is another one of those cars that kind of struggle to come up with something that really stands out as a negative. Um, we agreed <laughs> the rear end. Yeah. I know it's a kind of a, always been a controversial since it came out. I still don't think I'm, that it's beautiful. Yeah. Like, especially when the front and the side really look beautiful and elegant, the back seems to fall apart a little bit for me. So I think yeah. that is the air ball. And then the incandescent uh, turn signals. It, it, that's a little weird. It really, it doesn't, it's not up to snuff. Uh, so that's, yeah, our air ball. And then finally, we do need to talk about your fuel economy figures for this S90. Uh, so the T6 model is going to come in at 21 city, 31 highway, 25 combined, uh, which is pretty impressive fuel economy. And then for the T8, uh, it's actually rated at MPGE, so it's going to come in at 60 MPGE. So at the beginning of the video, I like to ask a question that I want answered throughout the review. And today I asked, is this a good alternative to the German status quo? And I think the answer is absolutely. Um, this vehicle has a lot of positives as we've discussed. And really the thing that stands out the most to me is that it has a lot more character. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and talk about the pricing, which is one area where I'm very, very impressed with this S90. 
Now, the below prices are going to be for the T6 all-wheel drive model. Um, so the momentum is going to start at 51195 The R design is 54295 And then the inscription is also that same price. You just kind of pick the dual uh, top trim levels. Um, and if you do want that T8 engine, that's going to cost a little bit extra on top of that. Now we do have the R design as well as a few different options. So heated rear seats, heated steering wheel, 750. R design full leather seating, 750. Metallic paint, 645. Protection package premier, 475. Trunk spoiler, 450. Optional 20 inch wheels for 800. And then the destination charge uh, of 995 makes this one as equipped, 58515. Um, and guys, I have to say, I'm very, very impressed with that pricing. Um, once you get in this vehicle, you kind of realize that this is, it straddles the segment between like a BMW 5 Series and a 7 Series, especially when you get in stuff like the rear seat and just the materials in here. So this is like a $58,000 uh, discount likes S Class. It's really quite impressive that Volvo is able to give you that for that $58,000 price point. Well guys, we've enjoyed watching this in-depth look of the 2020 Volvo S90 R design. If you made it this far in the video, hopefully that means you enjoyed it at least a little bit. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.